Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about implicit differentiation. So up until now, we've taken the derivative in respect to x of something with only x's, right? Derivative of this was just 3x squared. Or the derivative of something in respect to t, and there were only t's in the expression. Or derivative in respect to y, when there's only y in the expression. What we haven't seen yet is the derivative in respect to one variable when there's multiple variables in the expression itself. So what's going on when you take the derivative in respect to some variable? You always end up with d that variable dx once you take that derivative. So once I take the derivative of x cubed using the power rule and I get 3x squared, there's really a dx dx here. But dx divided by dx is just 1, so we don't waste our time writing that. Same thing with d dt. If I take the derivative of 3t to the fourth using the power rule, I get 3t cubed. Normally, I would also get a dt dt, but again, that's equal to 1, so we don't write that. However, if I take the derivative of something like this in respect to t, when I take the derivative of x cubed, yes, I get 3x squared, but then I also get a d whatever that variable was that I just took the derivative of with a dt over it, minus the derivative of negative 2t would just be 2, and again, there's that dt dt, so this knocks out. So this dx dt here is where our dy dx is or any other d something d other variable is coming up when I'm taking the derivative in respect to one variable where the variable I'm taking the derivative of does not match that denominator. So this in itself is really called implicit differentiation and we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of problems where I have x's and y's in the expression and I'm going to be trying to solve for dy dx. Number one, so when I take the derivative of this whole thing in respect to x, I'm looking for dy dx here. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and I took the derivative of an x in respect to x, plus the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared. I took the derivative of y in respect to x, so dy dx, and the derivative of 4 is just 0. So again, that dx dx is just 1, so I have 2x plus 3y squared dy dx equals 0. I'm solving for dy dx now. So I just move that 2x over and divide by 3y squared. So there is dy dx. This is still the derivative of this curve. So this is still the formula to find the slope of the tangent line at any point on this curve. Since this derivative has x's and y's in it, if I wanted to find the slope of the tangent line of this curve, I would need an x and a y value to plug in here. Unlike examples that you've seen so far where you take the derivative of something and you have just x's to plug in. Number two, find dy dx if x squared y plus y squared equals 6x. So when I look at this first term here, x squared y, since there's no operation here, that's implied multiplication. So I'm going to need a product rule when I take the derivative of x squared y. So I have first x squared, derivative of the second. The derivative of y is 1, but I took the derivative of a y, so dy dx, plus the second y times the derivative of the first, 2x. So there's my product rule. Plus, when I take the derivative of y squared, I have 2y dy dx. And then the derivative of 6x is just 6. From here, I'm going to get every term that has a dy dx on one side of the equal sign, and I'll move terms that don't have a dy dx onto the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to leave this x squared dy dx. I'll leave the 2y dy dx. And then on the right side, I'll have 6 minus 2xy, so I just brought this term over. On this side, what I'm going to do is factor out a dy dx so that I have x squared plus 2y is equal to 6 minus 2xy. From here, I can just divide by the x squared plus 2y, and here's my final answer for dy dx. A lot of times you'll see people skip from this step to this step. It's not completely necessary to factor out the dy dx. If you can kind of do this factoring out and division in your head, it's completely fine to skip from this step to this step. I just like to show this middle step in the first couple of examples so you know how I got from here to here. But moving forward, I'll most likely skip this in between step. Number three, find dy dx if x plus sine y is equal to xy. So when I take the derivative of x, I just get one. 
when I take the derivative of sine y, I'm going to use kind of a chain rule here. The derivative of sine is cosine. I leave the y alone times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of y is dy dx equals product rule here for x times y. So first derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. Same thing as before, and I'm going to get everything with the dy dx on one side of the equal sign and everything that doesn't have a dy dx on the other side. So I subtract that x dy dx over and I subtract the one over. This is what I end up with. So now when I solve for dy dx, I'm going to have y minus one over a cosine y minus x. Find dy dx if x sine 2y equals y cosine x. So a lot going on here on the left side. I'm going to have a product rule with x sine of 2y and then a chain rule when I take the derivative of sine 2y. So first times derivative of the second. The derivative of sine is cosine. Leave the 2y times the derivative of 2y, which is going to be 2 dy dx. That's the first part of my product rule plus the second sine 2y times the derivative of the first is just 1, so I don't even need to write that, equals a product rule again. y is the first, cosine x is the second. So first derivative of the second, the derivative of cosine x is negative sine x, plus second derivative of the first, derivative of y is dy dx. Same deal, everything that has a dy dx is going to be on one side of the equal sign, and everything else I'll scoot over to the other side. So I'm going to just clean this term up a little bit. I'll write that as 2x cosine 2y dy dx. I'm going to subtract this cosine x dy dx over. I'm going to rewrite this as negative y sine x and subtract this sine of 2y over. From here to solve for dy dx, the negative y sine x minus sine 2y stays in the numerator. And then my denominator is going to be 2x cosine 2y minus cosine x. An important thing to note here when you're solving for dy dx, a lot of the times you'll end up with the fraction and a lot of the times that fraction is not really going to do any kind of simplification. So you're just going to kind of end up with whatever you ended up with. So don't stress and get to the end looking for a ton of simplification that's just not there. Five. So this one's a little bit different than ones we've looked at so far. Find the equation of the line tangent to this curve at the point two negative three. So I'm going to follow the same steps that I have been when I'm finding the equation of a tangent line. So the first thing I need to do is find the derivative. So in this case, that's going to be solve for dy dx. Derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Here I'm going to do a product rule where negative 2x is the first and y is the second. So negative 2x dy dx plus y times negative 2. And that's going to be equal to the derivative of 21, which is 0. I'm going to leave the 2y dy dx and the negative 2x dy dx, and I'll add over the 2y. Now if I divide, I'm going to have 2y over 2y minus 2x. There is some easy simplification here. I can definitely take a 2 out of every term, so I end up with y over y minus x. So again, this is your derivative. This is the formula that helps you find the slope of the tangent line at any point on the curve. The point that I'm looking to find the slope at is x is 2 and y is negative 3. So I'm going to plug those values into the derivative. So y is negative 3, y is again negative 3, minus x is 2. So m tan is going to be negative 3 over negative 5, which is positive 3 over 5. So when I write the equation of my tangent line, I have y minus y1, so minus negative 3 becomes plus 3, is equal to m tan, 3 over 5, times x minus 2. You can leave this equation of a line in point slope form. This is how the AP usually writes it. They don't expect you to solve for y. It's just algebra that's unnecessary. So once you plug in your m and your x1, y1, just leave it alone. Number six, find d squared y dx squared if x squared plus 4y squared is equal to 4. So this right here, this d squared y dx squared, this is fancy for find the second derivative. So what I'm going to need to do here is find the derivative of this curve and then find the derivative of that derivative. Derivative of x squared is going to be 2x 
derivative of 4y squared is going to be 8y dy dx. And then the derivative of 4 is just 0. I'll leave the 8y dy dx on this side of the equal sign, subtract over that 2x, and then divide by 8y. So I have negative 2x over 8y, which is the same thing as negative x over 4y. So now, in order to find d squared y dx squared, I'm taking the derivative of dy dx, what I just found, the negative x over 4y. So for this, I'm going to need quotient rule. Low 4y d high. Derivative of negative x is negative 1 minus high negative x. D low derivative of 4y is 4 dy dx all over low squared. So that's 4y squared. So now when I start to clean this up, this is just going to become negative 4y minus minus is going to be plus x. We don't like to leave this dy dx floating around and there's also a 4 here which I'm going to stick in the front. I'm actually going to replace this dy dx with what we found it was equal to in the step before. So I'm going to plug in negative x over 4y and over 4y squared, so that's 16y squared. When I continue cleaning this up, I have negative 4y. These 4s will cancel. I end up with minus x squared over y all over 16y squared. We don't love the complex fractions, so what we do is just multiply everything by a y to clear that denominator. When I do that, my final answer for the second derivative is going to be negative 4y squared. These y's cancel, so minus x squared all over 16 y cubed. That's it for implicit differentiation. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.